Hello everybody, and I'm going to mess with a uh, test version of Blender here, so let me open this up and get started. This is a variant of Blender 269 for 32-bit. Let's boot up. It's taking a little while. And... Documentation, this says something about Blender 2.7, or precursor build to 2.7. So I am testing this. And I'm not messing with my regular files. But as you can see, it has a new fancy tab setup, which is kind of cool. I'll drag this down a little bit. I'll drag this down. Switch the cycles. And what's neat is this one has, hold on a sec, this one has the volumetric rendered now? Yeah, volumetrics, which is pretty cool. It's a bit slow, but it's pretty cool. I'll show you in a little moment. Make this light a bit brighter. And I'm going to go pausing to change this, uh, Material of this cube. And there's shaders. And if I scroll down a little bit, we have volume shaders now, which is really cool. So I'm going to go with the scatter. And I'll get rid of this stuff, use surface shader to go with the volume shader. When a volume shader doesn't work with everything, but it works with a lot of things, you can have like a surface. But generally you want to work with transparent, or translucent, or glass. But I find transparent probably works the best if you combine it, or some variation of that. Or if you use a glass, you want to mix with the transparent, because glass alone doesn't mix too well. But I'm not going to go into that, we're just going to do a real quick test render here. Fall and render. And as you can see, that's your volumetric uh, shader interacting with the light. So go back here and I'll push the anis anisotropy. Yeah, I think that's how you see it. Let's see what it does. And you can see it changes the way the light interacts. Of course, it's better if you do it a lot more samples. I am just messing real quick. And something I'm going to be curious about is whether or not density would be directional. Because I know you can feed it a black and white thing, uh, or a factor. But I'm curious if it uh, is affected by direction. But I don't think it is. <laughs> so let's go. Uh, where is it? Input? And put in a value for density. And it should be the same as the density settings. And wait, I want to. Put this in ice trap back this So let's try that. Yeah. Which is the same as grayscale color, right? Well I was curious to see if density had axials or uh, so let's say if you could uh substitute uh, red, green, blue for x, y, z in direction, and if you multiply the x, y, and the z to get your density of your object, I think that would be a cool thing, but we'll try doing a color input, see if that has any uh, variation. <laughs> I don't know if it will, but Let's see I plug color in. Right now it's black and white, so it should be uniform density. If it was this, it would be uniform density on all three axes, because 
right now it's grayscale. So let's try it. It kind of works. Now I was thinking if I color shift it, if the density goes off to one side or the other, like uh, shifts on the X, Y, or Z, if I just make it a color, it'll be interesting to see. So, let's do RGB and just start a giggles and curiosity. I'm going to bring these up so they are more dense. Because if I was thinking there was axial density, bringing these colors up would make them more dense. And bringing the red down would make it less dense. So it should be more dense on whatever. <laughs> I'm thinking if you could substitute these for axes, it would be a cool thing. And then what would happen is you multiply the densities. So if this was x, this would be the lowest density. Y and Z. I was thinking you could use a color channel input to control it. We'll see if it does or not. And it still seems to be a uniform density. Let's try. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't seem to have density variation on the axes, does it? No. So it would get thinner on one side if it used color data, would it not? Yeah. Well, that's an idea for uh, developers to consider is... I don't know if there's another term for it, but I would call it axial multiplied density. <laughs> Just an idea, but... And then you could use the color channels to represent the three axes. And where those three axes intersect, you take the multiplier of each value to create the density. And that would be a cool way to key in a density for a volumetric, but it's just a crazy ass idea. Yeah. But I don't think it's happening here. Yeah. I might need a whole different shader anyway, so it probably won't work with this one. <laughs> Based on that idea, I made a, uh, a texture to test it. So I did... But I never got around to testing it. We'll see if it works. So we want input and... Image? Where's... Or texture image. Image texture. Derp. Right now, I'm just going to unplug that and put it back to a regular shader just so you can see what's going on. Is it diffuse? Diffuse, there it is. Okay. To the surface. And I'm going to plug in the color. And I'm going to make it generated because there's no UV maps on this cube. Where is the texture coordinate generated? And desktop directional density test. Because that was the thing I was going to run through here and I didn't have a chance to do that. So, if we go to uh, UV editing, we should be able to preview it. And it's this texture I made, which uses uh, an RGB to create an interesting pattern. If there was directional density, you should be able to spot it with something like this. Because you would multiply, be the most dense at that corner, and least dense. And when you have a color by itself, you're multiplying by the other two, so it would still be the same as zero. So it would probably get more dense to one of the corners. At least that was my thinking in this test, or to come up with this test. So, oh, I go to see if the color renders and I get an error, it crashed. So apparently uh, this experimental version of Blender has a problem with the textures, or at least the Windows 32 build does. 
So I can get only so far and bring in a texture. It was a PNG texture. And it crashed. I don't know if it's just the way it handles certain textures, or if it's file size, or image size, you know. But I will click send error report. Hopefully it gets to where it's supposed to go. <laughs> yeah, Stimmy done this, but thing is, it has texture bug, or just build this, this particular experimental build, and I did not see any difference in directionality with the colors fed into this. But it is an idea if somebody wants to test it or you can program for it. <laughs> I think you could get really cool stratification and stuff in density or really cool patterns if you could use colors to uh, define where the density interacts or intersects. Just a thought. But now I will quit this video and post it to YouTube.